Hello, for those of you just joining us, welcome to our annual Sarnia Lampton Digital Symposium. I'd like to introduce our next presentation and presenter. Uh, the presentation is on the application of AI for manufacturing, IoT, and other data intensive domains. Please welcome the co-founder of Quarta, Mohammed Islam. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I hope you can hear me, right? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mohammed, and I'm a co-founder of Quota Incorporation. Uh, let me. My screen is visible to you. Am I correct? Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. So today, I'd like to introduce you to our exciting work on real-time automatic telemetry analysis using artificial intelligence. So I'd just like to introduce myself at the beginning. Uh, as I just mentioned that I'm a co-founder of Quarter. In academic side, I'm doing and pursuing my PhD at Ryerson and working with machine learning and post quantum cryptography. I have done my master's from Ryerson as well in computer science. And before that, I worked in the industry, mainly in education, information technology, telecommunication, uh, mainly in Ericsson and Nokia Siemens for around 15 years. And my research interest are focused on machine learning and deep learning in the area of cryptography and quantum computing, which I'm actually doing in my PhD. Before that, uh, I also like to explore recurrent neural network approaches for time series anomaly detection, which was my topic in my master's research, but that was for a, a narrow domain in a cloud environment, cloud platform environment. So now I like to expand that uh, you know, research area into broader domains. So in a nutshell, this is who I am. Got disconnected. Okay. So this is the outline of our today's presentation. First, I'd like to give a brief introduction of uh, the problem that we are going to handle and our goal in that respect. Then we'll highlight the various aspects of automatic telemetry analysis. Next, I will try to introduce water incorporation and how we can add value to business. After that, I like to describe the architecture and implementation of our proposed solution in a complex IT system monitoring environment in a cloud platform. And finally, we'll describe the applicability of our findings and best practices to leverage AI for data intensive domains. Let's start with anomaly. Anomalies are observations that are inconsistent with others. It could be extreme feature value in one dimension or even in multi dimensions. For example, the uh, typical example in here is we can see the white egg, which is deviated from others only in the color dimension. But you can make boil out of it, you can make omelet out of it, it will be the same egg. So, this is a typical example of an anomaly. And it can be resulted from many areas in practical domains. For example, in software failures due to programming or application bugs, it could be due to hardware malfunctioning, system overload, for example, exceptionally high traffic is being offered 
during the special occasions like Christmas or any other like election. Uh, so people are more interested about knowing things. So the load is unusually high. So that could be one of the situation. It could be due to memory, memory leakages of applications. And it can also happen due to the human configuration errors and due to error in data collection as well. Now the significance of anomaly detection actually comes from the fact that the insight that has been provided by the outliers. And you can implement it or think of implementing it in various uh, application domain, like in intrusion detection in network traffic situation, or it could be fraud detection in financial transactions in credit card. You know, from the credit card history, you can check that whether the transactions are getting unusual or not. It could be from manufacturer equipment damage prevention, health monitoring, or any kind of pattern recognition from diagnosis. Now let's talk about logs and matrices. Logs are event specific. It's system generated set of data. In general, you will find logs in the textual format collected whenever any trigger happens due to some issues in the system. It serves as a good purpose for forensic analysis or as an evidence to prove that you fulfill the service layer agreement. On the other hand, Can you hear me, by the way, because my system is showing? Yes. OK, perfect, perfect. Sorry about that. Because the system is showing that no microphone detected. Sorry about that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, matrices are measurement at a point in time of the behavior and condition of a particular system. It could be aggregated. It could be taken directly. For example, in this particular case on the right hand side that you can see that we have the logs and we can see that in metrics we are taking in an aggregated fashion. That is uh, an average response time of any microservice per five minutes. So this is one such an example on the right hand side. Now the motivation and goal for this work and the solution. Nowadays, companies rely on data to make informed business decisions. But the massive amount of logs and matrices that are generated from the modern systems make the things very complicated. It is not always feasible to get the data point leveled by experts, considering the scale and, you know, and the speed at which they are generated. Unsupervised learning methods seems rational in this scenario, like doing auto leveling of logs and raise flag to operation teams for potential anomalies. Considering all those, we can feel the need of a model capable of processing the multidimensional time series. So therefore, our goal is to leverage AI to automate telemetry analysis across industries. Let's talk about the time series. In general, time series are data points uh, of a sequence of observations indexed in the time order. So therefore, it will be a sequence of discrete time data. In the domains like applied science and engineering fields, like communication, signal processing, weather forecasting, and earthquake prediction, highly rely on on the time series data to find the patterns and trends so that it can predict, it can you know, forecast what's going to happen next. Our focus is on using the time series in the area of system monitoring. And that system monitoring could be a cloud system, it could be any production environment, any operational environment.
the technique that has been used you know over the years in time series analysis because it is not new especially in the domain of statistics and our early approach uh, as an early approach autoregressive integrated moving average has been used to deal with time series data then considering the seasonal nature in the time series seasonal arima has been also implemented however time series even uh, events often contains nonlinear trends which impact the accuracy of statistical forecasting models on the other hand artificial neural net based models have nonlinear activation functions which can effectively extract nonlinear relationship in the data so it has a higher potential to get the relationship so considering that non stationary multi dimensional time series may be better handled by neural network compared to classical tools like sarina or arina model now the neural network model that we are you know proposing based on our experience of implementation is we use recurrent neural network based model a specific uh, class of that which is gated recurrent unit or we can call it gru and our gru based auto encoder uh, used it to generate the reconstruction error and then we leverage the anomaly likelihood measurement approach on the reconstruction errors that maintains the window of recent error values and incrementally processes the raw errors so now the historical errors are modeled as a normal rolling distribution and we measure the probability of anomaly by analyzing the distribution of the auto encoder reconstruction error moreover as per our design we can tune the anomaly reporting by changing the anomaly likelihood threshold rather than changing the error reporting directly of the model this gives us a better control over the model's output for example the reported false positive amounts which is the key pain point for many operation teams because once you are getting notified under times and uh, maybe one of them is actual problem then once you lose focus and people will ignore the notifications in real scenario in a cloud environment you might get these thousands of times per day we have explored the parameters uh, that governs the gru architecture and we used a grid search method to tune the hyperparameters of our model so that with the tune model the reporting of the false alarms are much reduced and which is manageable for the operation teams now we like to talk a little bit about quarter so we have four founders in quarter combinedly we have more than 60 years of experience building complex software solutions for diverse industries and we believe our team can help you to generate bespoke solutions for all major domains and industries data is the foundation for every business nowadays in quarter we get custom data pipeline to collect store and analyze the data that works for you we use cutting edge academic research and latest innovative technology enhanced with custom research and development if applicable to produce the best solution for your business our solution automate the process of big data analysis and help make business decision easier you will get actionable answers to most of your crucial questions this is what i believe in quarter we specialized in tailored solution 
that involve R&D to address the issue related to big data analysis using AI, data science, mathematics, and statistical techniques. We do AI and ML implementation for analysis of your data. We deploy the solution using serverless micro, micro services using the cloud. We follow the architecture and design of the state of art software engineering techniques, and we also try to maintain the security of the software as much as possible. Now, we'd like to share our experience of implementation of a solution in the complex IT system, cloud platform monitoring. So, in cloud environment, it is a very complex environment. What happens if you don't do that? It is almost infeasible for human to monitor the cloud environment. It is very much possible for one to even five servers. But when you have thousands of servers, it is not feasible to even monitor by humans, even deploying multiple people. So the service regression, unplanned outages, supply chain breakage, customer dissatisfaction, these are the common side effects if you do not take care of that. On the other hand, benefits of automatic monitoring, it will allow you to preventively mitigate the potential of failures, proactively replace the parts that might go down, and it will also help to interconnectivity with the uh, fourth revolution of industry. Now let's talk about the problem and our goal in this particular cloud platform, and the implementation example that I like to share with you. As you know, cloud platforms under the hood consists of a complex interconnected stack of hardware and software components. Each of these components can fail, which may lead to an outage. In recent years, advanced and automated monitoring systems have been implemented in data centers. However, most existing monitoring system still depends on statistics and heuristics from the observed health metrics. But such anomaly detection techniques are less effective in cloud environment due to the fact that cloud platforms scale and repeatedly changing nature of the workload in the cloud environment. Now, as I was mentioning before that false positives are a, uh, is a big problem in operation team. So the reduction of efficiency is typically demonstrated in a cloud environment by numerous false alarms that overrun the operation teams. And eventually you will get loose of tracking those and you will start ignoring them. So in this talk, we'll be sharing our solutions architecture in details, implementation notes, and the best practices that emerge while we evolve the monitoring system. Other researchers and practitioners can leverage them to build anomaly detectors for complex environment. So now let's talk about the key challenges uh, that we face in cloud uh, monitoring. A monitoring platform demands complete and thorough visibility of the networks, devices, and services in real time, if not, near real time to live up to the agreed service layer agreements, high expectations. So we had to deal with an existing monitoring and notification system that suffered from flooding of false alerts and the high dimensionality and non-linearity of the data in the cloud platform made it difficult to use statistical models. So that's why we have to explore the artificial neural net models. Here is the architecture diagram of our model. So what we have done, we have designed a layered microservice-based architecture that constructs a scalable and reliable data collection pipeline. 
the pipeline can control and collect or pull data from various sources, message queues, and databases. As shown in the figure, you can see only two layers here, like layer one and layer two. This was adapted from another seven layer architecture that has been designed uh, earlier by our team. So from there, this particular scenario, we actually merge few layers together. As, as you can see here, we have adjusted the seven layer architecture from layer one to three, convert and splitter as a single layer, and layer five and seven together on the composite layer two. So for this particular implementation, we use these two composite layers. This architecture allows us to use microservices and public subscribe or pub sub architecture patterns and offers a good balance between scalability and maintainability due to the high cohesion and low coupling of the solution. Furthermore, asynchronous communication between the layers makes the layered architecture a building block for general architecture for processing any types of streaming data. And the architecture flexibility allows modification as long as each layer has an atomic task and unique business logic. So that is another good point of the model. In this particular example, as we are taking the cloud uh, platforms data, so the incoming log data in this example are already in JSON format. So we had minimal extract, transform, and lead, that is ETL efforts. And therefore, merging the layers responsible for ETL was financially and technically feasible in our case. And on the right hand side, as you can see that in order to get the feedback from the operation team, we have used a channel through the Slack so that uh, the reported anomalies of the model can be directly sent to the uh, defined groups or relevant groups. So they can have a look at it. They can provide a feedback. We'll be getting to that in coming slides. At the same time, you can also see in the middle, we have utilized both uh, IBM object storage and IBM cloud and database as well. So we use the triggers based on you know event and also based on the uh, storage trigger for the solution. Now the simple areas of application, almost of the shelf can be done in performance monitoring or abnormal workload monitoring. It could be CPU memory utilization or monitoring network traffic. So for those cases, this solution can almost be readily available because we have analyzed all those to have this solution. Architecture that I showed. Now, as I mentioned in the architecture that on the right hand side, we have a mechanism to reach to the operation team for the feedback. So what the detectors is doing, it sends out the alerts to the appropriate DevOps team using Slack. Now here, as you can see, we put five replies. This indicates that uh, if we have more than uh, one message or reporting coming within 10 minutes interval, we put them into the same channel just to make sure that it is not uh, cluttering the whole space. So this they goes under one event and we found that in most of the cases, this is the scenario. You do not need to report them Separately, better it is more meaningful to report them together as a sequence. The Slack message contains a high level of summary of the alert and the count of anomalous features grouped by the platform component group. We mask them for privacy purpose of the data, but as you can see that we are doing group wise count and we are also providing these options for the users. So in the report, it also includes a hyperlink to the detailed report. And in the detailed report, that contains a textual description of the anomalous features and also a graphical representation of all these features. 
including the um, historical data. For example, you are having a look at current 20 minutes. You have the reference data for first one week. So you can compare whether there is a deviation compared to the same time yesterday, or it's a weekly pattern that you have some trend based on the day of the week. You can compare it with the previous week's data as well. And the customer or the operation teams, they have the option to choose between the things like it is an anomaly, it's not an anomaly, sometimes they are not sure, and which they can actually you know, uh, provide their feedback multiple times. It could be anomaly, but no impact, which is also very common in, in the cloud domain. Now, this is an example of the graphical representation, not the textual part, because there is a textual part with tabular format where we explain how many features are actually anomalous and how many of them are high or low in that manner. Now, this particular graph is showing two days data, 48 hours data, but in the recent implementation, we make it for eight days so that you can compare the weekly seasonality, as I mentioned. Our tuned model can detect anomalies for apparent changes in the data set and quickly adjust to the new normal trend. We can also control the level of detection and corresponding false positive by choosing the appropriate likelihood threshold, as I mentioned before. In this particular example, as you can see, we are uh, you know, presenting two APIs, API 1 for the first two graphs and API 2 in the bottom three graphs. For the first case, case, we always had the data, but we can see at the right hand side, top right hand side, in this particular point, we are missing some data. You know, for a while we have not received any data. So that has been reported by the model that okay, we have some unusuality here. On the other hand, for the API 2, as you can see that we have a periodic appearing of this data, so which has been marked previously as well, and it was fine. It has single reporting, multiple reporting, but in the same time. Recently, on the right-hand side, and the bottom right-hand side, you can see that this data is appearing multiple times and not in the same moment, it is coming continuously. So this is something which has not been observed by the model in the previous you know, trend. So that has been also reported to the operation team so that they can have a look at it. So now uh, to share the insights that we have uh, found throughout through our experiment is, in our case, the console depends on many external services. The one in the cloud environment, the one that we deployed. Suppose a scenario that the alerts are coming from microservices interacting with the external APIs. In that case, it may hint that the problem is external and the root cause of the issue could be beyond the source ecosystem. Then analysis of anomalies from multiple data centers together helps to understand whether the issue is localized or, sorry, that is confined to a specific data center and can be mitigated by redirecting the request to another data center or the problem is a global one, where a failover will not actually help. So that localization can be possible with that one as well. Next, the anomaly detection further helps to identify the denial of service attack, as they're easily detectable by anomalies related to spike in the county statistics. So this is more conventional case of detection anomalies. Now, it could also happen that it can be a mistake of a tester who is executing a load test in the production environment rather than the staging environment. So it is worth mentioning that the attack may not always necessarily be malicious and coming from outside. It could be this kind of issue as well. So identifying all those actually helps the operation team to be in a comfortable zone. 
And the last point that we mentioned here is the 20 minutes heads up offered by the model. It may not sound like much. However, to put things into perspective, the SLA of 99.999% uptime, it actually allows approximately five minutes of downtime per year. Thus, 20 minutes of extra time gives DevOps teams an extra wiggle room that is appreciated. Now let's uh, talk about the best practices that we uh, found throughout this exercise. We deployed serverless, serverless architecture, which enables the auto scaling. It helps to cope with the changing patterns in the log records arrival in the cloud environment. NoSQL database as a service, document-centric database, it simplifies the ETL of our JSON-based log records. Also, one more thing we uh, like to highlight, which is we need to make sure that the workload on which the anomaly detector is tested resembles the workload of the environment that the detector will monitor in production. So we uh, suffered with that when we tested with a staging environment, and then we found that it is not exactly similar like the, in the live one. So this is a very important learning. And this online retaining part, while we have online retaining in our system, we still need to do batch retraining periodically. The reason is in cloud environment, new features coming from newly deployed services and APIs frequently appear over there. And for that particular periodic retraining, we found that a six hour interval was quite adequate, uh, adequate in our particular situation in cloud environment. So the learning, the solution, the learning process, the best practices, can be used with other data types, as long as they can be mapped to a numerical scale and represent as a time series. So that is the motivation for us to go beyond the cloud environment and implement the solution in all other domains where we can actually add value. Now, some of the typical examples where we can use it, like some uh, the same principle as I mentioned, if we can uh, represent in a numerical uh, scale and represent in time series pattern, the solution can be applied in other types of telemetry. These are some examples like uh, when the sensors are measuring temperatures, pressures, voltage, ampere, RPM, all those cases. And another interesting factor in our solution deployment here is here in most of the sensors, you will find that in many cases, they are dealing with maybe single time series data, like it is only measuring the temperature, like room temperature in, for instance, or you have a meter that is measuring the water level of a river. So you are not taking other things into consideration. In cloud environment, it was more about so many things, like when you have the CPU load, it could be resulted from many other things, like more incoming request. It could be resulted from memory leakage by some application. It could be by issue related to network communication. So we had to deal with huge dimensions of time series, like we have to incorporate all those together. So that that's why we feel that the solution can be implemented in other domains where there are relationship between the features or components as well. So we measure things and we plug in the things with the model and we see how it behaves. And we are confident the model is going to provide the insight out of that. Similarly, it can be extended to the financial transaction analysis like fraud detection in credit card and price prediction, profit and loss analysis. Few things like based on the values of a peak values in the count statistics, you do not need a sophisticated anomaly detector for that one. You can use statistical based models for doing that one. 
But for example, uh, someone is using his credit card and he never crossed more than $1,000 per month. This is typical. But all of a sudden, in one month, his bill goes up to $2,000 or $1,500. Certainly, this is an anomaly or anomalous behavior. Most of the anomaly detectors, regardless, it is a artificial neural net model or it is a statistical model, it will be able to detect that. But situation like that, maybe that is the summer and he likes to go for a vacation every year for one week or two weeks in summer. Now, normal models will fail to detect that one, but with a proper deep learning based model that can analyze over the years and knows that in summer, his bills might go 1500 to 2000. And this is a normal behavior. So that will not be reported as anomaly. So these are the just one example of uh, why we have to have this kind of sophisticated model to analyze it better. Now, finally, at the end, uh, we like to talk about the applicability of our solution. The work brings us closer to creating a gener general or generic anomaly detector, and it is therefore of interest to academic community. Furthermore, it also has interest, it will interest to practitioners as our findings, insights, and best practices can be leveraged to building a production grade anomaly detector in other fields. So this solution is actually tested in a high scale multidimensional environment. So if you have further queries, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, do we have any questions at this time for Mohammed? We'll just give it a moment, see if anybody types something here to chat. And um, and feel free to um, get Mohammed's contact information. I'll be also sharing it to everybody at the end of the event, um, where you can follow up for it with him for possible networking or any questions you have regarding his presentation. We have a question in here, Mohammed. How do you suggest we use this in industri industrial settings? Okay, thank you, William, uh, for the nice query. For any machine learning model or deep learning model, uh, it actually tries to find the correlation. It tries to set some weight to each of the input that has been given. So, what, you know, it's a very interesting term. When I started learning for machine learning first time, my first query was how machine actually learns, how it is behaving like we human. So that was my first query inside me. So the thing is, then when I come to know that, for example, in neural network model, what it does, it gives the input as features. And it tries to match with appropriate weight for each feature to get the result. For instance, uh, as you were suggesting that in industrial settings, before going to that one, I'm just uh, trying to, uh, when we purchase a house, we check the square feet of the house, how, how big is it, what is the area, the locality of it, the age of it, right? So all those together, the model, or as a human, we think, okay, the house is 100 square feet, uh, 1,000 square feet, this house is 1,500 square feet. So it is not always one, 0.5 ratio. It is not linear relationship, right? Along with that, maybe the 1500 square feet house, it is in a locality where people don't want to go. So you see, even the area is more, it is not actually going. People are not willing to go over there. So the model, like us, the machine learning model, try to fit a weight for each of the criteria and multiply the things. The more data you give, it try to adjust the weight more precisely. So now this is the working principle of machine learning. Now, for industry, let's assume that it is a uh, manufacturing industry. While you are monitoring the temperature, you are monitoring maybe the density of the chemical and all those things. So you feed those into a machine learning model in an appropriate manner. In an appropriate manner means we have to do some 
pre-processing uh, 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 of the data so that it goes in a proper way to the machine learning model. And uh, this is the thing that more than 50% of the work of the machine learning or deep learning actually done before the data feed into the model. Okay, so once we can do the pre-processing of the data from the industry that we are talking about to a machine learning model, and then we have to tune the hyperparameters so that the model can get the relationship between them. And finally, we need to provide enough data as a reference. So if we can do that, we can uh, you know, implement this solution to any industry where we have the data in sequence. So this is the thing we need here in this solution. It needs to be sequential. Like we have a temperature in the morning like this. After one hour, it is this. Or after one second, it is this. Or even if it is the water level of a river, Maybe the changes will be in 24 hours, one inches or one centimeters like this. So I hope that answers the query. Do you have any other thing, William? Do we happen to have any other questions for Mohammed? If you have any questions, feel free to uh, just type it in the chat there. You're welcome. We have a question come in. How are cloud servers doing efforts? Sorry, one second. Doing okay. efforts to improve the security of so many sensitive data. Yeah, that, that is a very good uh, question. Here, in this particular example, um, let me go with our example. For example, when we are doing it, we are doing it for a uh, public cloud provider. And for this particular one, we use the serverless cloud architecture, but it was deployed in the same uh, cloud platform. But in general, to take this solution for uh, in any other areas, the typical security mechanism that has been uh, in place for any cloud server provider like IBM, like AWS or Microsoft Azure, we are leveraging those. We, we have not included any additional security measure for this one, this is for sure. And the point that you make, this is one of the reason in many of the large organization, not the small ones, they are a little bit uh, you know, shy of going to, for example, they don't want to share this uh, information to another big player like that. So they like to go for their own private cloud or like data centers, big data centers. So this kind of solution is there. For example, in telecommunication, they don't want to, you know, the big one like Ericsson, as I worked over there for so long, like 11, 12 years. So they don't like to go with full solution in the cloud. They rather have to have their own, you know, data centers, some of the operators, they like to have their own data centers. So the standard solution or the standard security measures that is present at this moment for the cloud operations, some are not happy with that one. But in most of the cases, you know, you will find that these measures are good enough, but not 100% secure for sure. Thank you, that was a great question. Uh, we have a follow-up question. Do you know if um, there are any projects to make possible sharing these public information or this information yeah. to public institutions as a preventive health campaign? Okay, for this one, the one that I mentioned, we have published our research work in uh, you know one of the most reputed venue, which is uh, ICSI, International Conference for Software Engineers. So this is the top venue in software engineering. So we published that in uh, this year's, uh, in 2021's uh, conference, and you will find it, it's available over there. Anomaly detection in large scale cloud uh, environment. So that was the title of the paper. It has the details of the solution and the results that we have. So you can refer to that one. 
And you can always come back to us if you have further queries, you are interested in something. So you're most welcome. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, so yeah, uh, Mohammed's information is right there on the screen. I'll also be sharing it at the end. Please follow up with him for any networking opportunities or to connect with him for any questions you may have. Uh, thank you again, Mohammed, for this wonderful presentation. Sure. And uh, we'll be continuing on the event with our next presentation at noon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Have a great day.